Hello and welcome to Let's Try Predestination. My name is Micah, also known as Marlo on Explorminate, and we're going to take another run at trying out predestination. Uh, we had some uh, problems with music levels. Uh, some people thought they were too loud. Um, so we're going to uh, try the game again. Uh, we'll go probably for a couple of videos here. Uh, beyond that point, the game is very difficult to continue playing, which I think you'll start to see as we progress. I'm just going to go with a small size galaxy. We're going to go average age, and uh, we'll leave everything else the same. We're going to start pre-warp. That's important because of uh, technology type reasons, as you'll see. And uh, we're going to be the humans because uh, humans. So, um, so generating map happens. Uh, that's mostly the star map. From what I've seen so far, the all the Terran planets, uh, all the different planet types, seem to have the same basic continent layout. From w what I can tell, if there is any variation in that, it's very slim, um, slim to none. So you know. Um, Okay, so let me get rid of the menu. Okay, and you should be able to see my mouse cursor this time. Uh, that has been a challenge in this particular game in ways I have not experienced uh, in other games. It, it can be a problem in some games, but this game is particularly annoying about that. Um, so these blue turquoisey areas, that's our starting city. It's our capital. Uh, we can go look at it. Uh, there's some stuff here, a damaged science vessel, that's where we crashed. Uh, there's some extra building room. And these graphics are placeholders, is what I'm told, these uh, hexagons. They'll be replaced by building, you know, buildings. Uh, but that's what we have right now. We've got a research lab. We're going to build some stuff in here a little bit later on, but not quite yet. We need to get the basics set up. But you can build things in the cities as well as around the cities. Now, this highlighted area here, and you can see the whole planet is composed of hexes. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can see little hot tiles around here that are lit up in different colors, and, and this is green is food, the yellow is minerals, and the, uh, red is coal, although we won't be using coal forever. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is get your basics up and running, and you'll see that a road automatically connects from whatever you build to the city. Now, I have learned the hard way that apparently there is a hard limit with the cities. You can't have any more than six connections to any one city. Um, as far as I can tell, the game doesn't actually tell you that anywhere that, I, that I've seen. Uh, I may be missing it, but I don't think it does. And so uh, that may just be something that needs to, to, to you know, come along as the game is uh, further developed. This is an alpha. It's going to have some rough edges because, you know, it's an alpha. Uh, we're going to research... Oh yeah, so this is our research tree. Uh, there are different tabs. Um, uh, there are some benchmarks kind of in every tab. Um, you know, for pre-warp, uh, space colonization, first contact. It doesn't mean that you have to get all the way up here before you can colonize another planet necessarily, or get all the way to pre-warp before you can reach another star, but these are kind of milestones. Um, kind of like eras, different eras in um, Endless Legend or uh, different ages in uh, the Civ series. Uh, think of it that way. So, um, I like to start with uh, honestly you just need all these technologies I don't you know um, and the game I've yet to play the game long enough to see whether or not there's any real advantage in starting um, you know in one area as opposed to another area but uh, we're gonna go with the factory first because that seems like a relatively sane and rational thing to do um, the reason why I haven't played the game long enough is because once you get to a certain point, the game becomes very difficult to continue playing because of some uh, technical limitations, it appears to me, in the current build. 
Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, if you go into the menu, you have an auto in turn, and this is really handy because just like a lot of 4X games in the beginning, you can have a lot of, you know, what I would call dead turns. Turns that need to pass while you're researching things or building things, but you're not actually, you know, doing anything. So this game has a nice feature where if you select auto in turn, you can, when you hit in turn, the game will just run until one of two things happens. Either you click on something like the next turn button again for example will stop the turns from running or until the game requires your attention to to make a decision uh, maybe your research has uh, finished and you now need to select uh, a new research project okay great sounds great doesn't it um, except that once you get a couple of cities uh, well, excuse me once you have colonized another planet is where I've really noticed it uh, the game really starts to kind of lag at that point, kind of chug, and uh, sometimes the turn button is unresponsive, and by the time you get up to about four planets or so, uh, the only thing that seems to stop the automatic turns from passing is uh, you completing some research or something similar to that. So, I'm sure that it's not supposed to work that way. I'm sure that's just one of those, you know, it's an alpha. These things are going to happen. It's to be expected. So I don't want to sound overly critical, because I don't mean to be, but, you know, if you're wondering why I haven't got into the mid-game and the late-game yet, it's because, um, I don't think you can at this point, at least not realistically. Um, and, uh, and I've got a decently powerful computer, um, I'm running a, an FX 8320, a GTX 660, and I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, so... You know, I'm not trying to run this on my little sister's laptop or anything. Um, you know, and I'm having problems. It's you know, it's a it's a decently it's a decently powerful machine, and um, it uh, you know has a lot of has a lot of problems in this game as we expand to other planets. But like I say, I'm sure that that will be sorted out. But the auto intern uh, feature is pretty cool. But there's uh, a you know something needs to be ironed out there. So. All right, so we've set up coal power plants, fossil fuel power plants. We've set up uh, an ore refinery. We've set up a farm. Uh, there's a question mark over here, which means something that, um, uh, you know, it's some sort of resource that we can detect, but we don't have the technology to use it. Um, this will reveal itself depending on what we research, I suppose. Now, over here, you've got your kind of meters of population. Right now, our city, our plant is basically full at 2,000. Um, I don't think that that's individual people, um, it's, but it's 2,000 something. Um, it's full, and that may seem odd at the start of the game, except that um, until I tell you that you can build more than one city on a planet. This planet, I believe, your initial planet will support four cities, and it kind of just depends on the planet and the type of planet it is, and the size of the planet, and blah, 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 blah. So, uh, as we build more cities on this planet, we'll be able to um, have more people, and so on and so forth. Our food is struggling at the moment, but that's because uh, we just built the farm, but we haven't actually passed a turn yet, so that'll start to change. Here's our energy situation. We have a capacity of 200. We're going to get 64 again that's you know we've built power plants but a turn has not yet passed uh, metal which is basically the uh, materials that you use to build essentially everything apparently nothing is made of wood in predestination everything's made out of metal uh, but you know it just represents the materials that you use to build things uh, whether it be buildings uh, on your planet or ships um, and and so on and so forth um, it's all represented as metal. So, and now um, this little guy, this little uh, hexagon guy, this is our scout. And he's going to automatically start doing circles around the highlighted area to reveal other places on the map. Now, we can send him uh, to pl specific places that we'd like him to scout, but it does cost us some money and it costs us some uh, energy. So, we can't just do it, you know, willy nilly. We have to uh, kind of. Be a little strategic about it. So, uh, all right. Well, let's get some turns passing, and in nine turns, uh, we'll have something else to research. And as you can see, 
those nine turns pass really quickly. The research is already done. The game uh, re kind of you know kind of paused itself, wants us to make some decisions here. Uh, Archaeology is a good one early on. Uh, ooh, environment sensors is good too. Um, gosh, they're all good, really. Uh, let's go with archaeology though. Uh, that will allow us to um, identify anomalies or find essentially goody huts, um, basically what they are. Um, hopefully the music is better for everybody. I can barely hear it, but when I um, play the um, videos back uh, that I've been testing, uh, I think you can still hear it. Okay, so two things have happened. Our research again ran out. These early research projects go by very quickly with the automatic turn on, and we have discovered that this is a crashed ship. Uh, because we finished researching our technology. Now, how do we take advantage of this crashed ship? In a lot of games, you would send your scout unit or some other unit onto that hex, and that's how you would collect whatever it is, but not in this game. In this game, you must build an artifact excavation site. Now, this does count as one of our city connections. Remember, I told you, you can only have six. And so, uh, oops, um, you know, we've already got five. Now, um, we can delete things and we will have to do that later on but that's just kind of something to keep in mind because and why do I say that because eventually the fossil fuel power plants are going to run dry and um, we'll have to be switching to some other form of power I like solar power um, because you don't necessarily have to find special resources to uh, use it in the game but uh, we'll kind of see what happens when we get there so yeah let's go with the environment sensors and this has will only will take five turns to research now we can we've got a research lab we've got a science vessel I like to build a factory it only cost 150 metal and seven energy even though we're not really building things right now I see no reason not to do it it's not prohibitively expensive it will take eight turns um, we can just make these notifications go away, right? Uh, we selected new research. Now this is kind of a general health of the um, population thing, this measurement right here. And if you uh, click on it, like it's yellow right now, you kind of want it to be green. And uh, oh, okay, it's telling us that our health could be better. So we need a hospital. So to build a hospital, you go to the city, you find it on the list, except it's not on the list because we haven't researched it yet because I forgot that you have to research it. So instead of whatever it is we're researching, we're going to research the hospital. That will make this better. Our morale will go up. And when your morale goes up, you can tax your people more and get more money um, because that's important. And it's really easy to like get in the red in this game if you're not kind of paying attention to what you're doing. Okay, research has already finished. Again, these early research projects very fast, so the hospital's done. That's good. Uh, tax office is great, but I want those environment sensors. So, okay, now let's go back to the city, and now we'll build the hospital. It only takes up one hex, so you can just kind of cram it in somewhere. And um, might you have to build more than one hospital? Sometimes you do. Um, but for right now, I think we'll be okay. So, sorry, I keep doing that. Uh, when you right-click, you get kind of a context-sensitive menu, but that's... Um, which we can't use right now because we haven't researched some of the technologies that it takes to do that. So we'll talk about more about that when we get there, which should be very soon, actually. Um, and as you can see, our scout has revealed some tiles that are uh, fertile soil, so this would be a good place to build more food. What we're on the lookout for, really, is uh, some places that are going to have food and minerals relatively close to each other because that's going to be a good place probably to build another city on this planet. So, uh, what have we done? Okay, we've researched environment sensors and we have researched the hospital. Oh, right, we just didn't make that go away. Okay, so now if we right click, we can see what kind of environments are on each of the planet's hexes. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what any of this stuff means because there's no tooltip or anything yet. Again, it's an alpha, so that's probably just not implemented yet. I suspect, I suspect, I may be wrong, but these greenish areas are the temperate kind of areas, Terran areas. These brownish areas are probably um, going to be desert or arid environment. And of course, you know, polar is polar, but you can't really do much on that anyway. Um, 
But on this planet, we're going to have mostly arid or desert and uh, the temperate uh, places. So it's pretty cool that it does it. Uh, but in this build of the game, I have to admit that I have not found it to be incredibly useful. One thing it is useful for, though, is getting a better look, because the lighting is really cool in the game. I like how it looks like, you know, the sun is clearly shining on one part of the planet and the other part's in darkness and all that. But sometimes you just want to see the lay of the land, and a great way to do that is to use this uh, environment map, because uh, it just lights up the whole planet and you can kind of see what you're looking at. So... Uh, it does have a purpose at the moment, but I don't know that it's exactly the purpose that it's intended to serve. Again, I'm sure that's something that'll be fleshed out more uh, as the game continues to develop. So, yeah, so our scout's going to keep going. I'll show you how we send him on a mission in a little while, but right now we're just going to let him kind of circle through this immediate area. We do need to pick another area of research, though. Uh, enriched fossil fuels is good. It gets us... Um, we don't really need it right now, but we might as well research it because you kind of have to research almost everything. Except, I'll say this: when you get to one of these places where there's one, when there's two or three uh, choices, what's going to happen is, is if you research whatever one you pick, it's going to be to the exclusion. Like in this row, you got breeding program, psychiatry, and medical testing. Whichever one we choose, we can't research the other two. So, I I believe. Uh, from what I've read, that you can get the other pro, the other uh, technologies through trading with other empires and so on and so forth later on. Solar power plants probably what we're, we're going to go for here. I like it the best because geothermal is cool and all, but it relies on having you know, having found uh, some like uh, geothermic vents, and there's no guarantee where those are going to be. Uh, so, but the solar plants you can build almost any, not anywhere, but almost anywhere. And certainly on a Terran world like this, you can build them virtually anywhere. And also they do better in deserts and barren, uh, planets too. So, uh, we might be kind of favoring those. Geothermal's cool, um, and you can use them in molten planets pretty easily, uh, which we will find some of once we get out to the solar system. And uh, what the solar system, the solar system in the in the you know galaxy, but uh, but solar power does pretty well too. So we're going to go with that actually. Now right now we can't actually see um, our solar system, other planets that might be in our solar system, and we cannot see uh, the galaxy. That is uh, that comes later. We haven't researched some of the things that let us do that yet. So that's why I haven't shown you that, because I can't. Um, that's just the way the game is designed at the moment. Uh, so, right, so what does it say that we need now? Okay, the health is going up, so um, probably just needs a little more time. And we're going to run the game a little bit more. It's going to tell us that we have researched the solar power plants. We're going to select new research. We're going to get enriched fossil fuels, because we have to at some point to get things going and research is going very quickly now um, and if it seems like I'm choosing kind of semi arbitrarily that's because in a sense I am um, partly because we need to get everything kind of up to this top level under the pre-warp regardless um, to get to where we can build ships and start exploring the uh, our local area of the galaxy. Um, yeah, automated infrastructure is good. It reduces the number of population. All these things, all the you know the minerals, the farm, the power plants, whatever. It requires population to run it. You got to have population, or you can't do it. Everything requires a certain amount, and that technology means that you don't need quite as many people to get the most benefit out of those uh, facilities. So that's what that is about. And another research task has finished. And this is kind of what the early game is like. You spend most of your time kind of going from research task to research task. Um, you know, from one project to the next. Uh, atmospheric filter is pretty good. Um, but we won't be using... Yeah, we won't be using fossil fuels for long. Um, that's 
guess we'll go with the atmospheric filter. Uh, that reduces the health penalty from fossil uh, power plants. Now we've got another thingy over here, another resource, but um, we don't know what it is yet. So it may be something like a geothermal vent that we opted not to research. It, it could be a number of things. So again, research complete. Uh, this seems to happen with amazing regularity. Now, if we research this, we'll be able to construct new cities. We're not in a hurry to do that. In part, at this point, it's because we have yet to locate a, a, a spot that would make sense. Let's get the anomaly sensors. We probably should have done that a while back. Okay. Population is safe and secure. This has gone green. Um, game is lagging a little bit for some reason. Um, and, uh, right, that's where we research atmospheric sensors. That's where we research... Oh, okay. The excavation has completed. Now, this is, uh, we didn't find anything. Yeah, there's no guarantee that you're going to find anything. This is this place right here. So, yeah, no guarantee you're going to find anything, which kind of sucks. There is a technology that you can research that makes it more likely that you can find things. It is called uh, ancient technology, but we went with automated infrastructure. We made a choice there. You could have, I could have chosen otherwise. Um... But, okay, so now this thing is basically not, I mean, yes, it does grant a bonus to research, and that's important, but, the, you know, when you need to build more stuff onto a city, uh, this is potentially an early uh, a candidate for early deletion. Now, our uh, coal plant, we're generating 50 um, energy per turn. We've got 62 turns left before the coal is gone or whatever fossil fuel it is they're using. I keep calling it coal just because that's what the picture looks like, but I guess it could be anything. Um, it's not it's not explicitly coal. As you can see, we can now build a solar power plant, but there's no point in doing that yet. So, yeah, um, we want to get to where we can build new cities, but before we do that, we need to find a place where it's actually worthwhile to build another city. Uh, I've yet to see a reason to just build cities because... Um, so, you know, um, City Blueprints is pretty cool. We'll talk about that a little bit later on when we talk about building cities. Um, let's get, okay, let's make a choice. Oh, Tax Office. That's an easy choice. I'll show you what that does in nine turns, which won't take very long to get here. Uh, in fact, it's here already. So let's pick another research topic. We probably need to pick one of these. Um... That'll increase population growth, but honestly, I, I've never researched this technology because population growth has yet to be a problem on any colony that I've had. In fact, you you know it's normal to to be full pretty quickly. So uh, this increases morale um, if all cities on a planet have at least one hospital. This is really important because of the tax system. Let me show you why. But let's pick that for research in the meantime. Okay. Let's take a look at the treasury. We haven't really looked at it yet. So we have 490 BC, billion credits, dollars, whatever. I'll end up calling it dollars, so just, you know. Um, and we're getting plus three per turn. That's all well and good. Now, if you click on it, you get the tax rate. Now, this is not just for this planet. I mean, it is right now because it's the only planet we have, but it's actually empire-wide. Uh, this is an empire-wide tax rate. I thought that perhaps at first, when I, when, I, when I was playing earlier, I thought that uh, perhaps it was each planet had its own little tax rate thing going, but it's it's empire-wide. Now, right now, we're getting 3 BC per turn. Why are we getting 3 BC per turn? I have no earthly idea. I really don't know. Um, I, hopefully one day there'll be a tooltip or a pop-up that explains where this money is coming from. Why don't I know where the money is coming from? But well, for one thing, we're you can set your tax rate. Right now, our tax rate is at zero. We are taxing our population nothing. So I don't know exactly what it is that's generating the income. I know that some of these buildings have a. Uh, let's cancel this. Some of these buildings have uh, a cost uh, to run them. Uh, they certainly have a cost to build, and you can see that when you, you know, over here, like if we want to build a fossil fuel power plant, it, we need a hundred metal and fifty bucks, fifty dollars. 
50 space bucks. Um, that's fine. Now, um, but you don't know how, what the upkeep is. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you. So that's something that I think that could probably be improved. And it does say it costs one BC turn less to run than other infrastructure, which is fine, except that I don't know what it costs to run the other infrastructure. Um, so, yeah, because it doesn't, it doesn't tell you. So, I don't know. Um, so all that clicking around to say that I don't know why we're earning three um, space bucks per turn. It's cool that we are, but I it's the game doesn't tell you why this is happening, where the source of the money is, um, and it's difficult to like if you get in the red, it can be difficult to kind of pull yourself back out because. Uh, or at least I have found it to be so far because I don't really know why I why I'm in the red to start with. So what can you do? Well, let's look at this. So right now our tax rate is zero. We can raise our tax rate here, and so on and so forth. Now, over here is a morale indicator, and right now it's at zero percent, and we got a green check mark. So, and this tells us that morale is good. Morale will be positive on all planets at this tax level. If we hover over this longer, will it tell us things? I don't think it does. Okay, just wanted to check and make sure. But, um, yeah, now if we take the slider up, now we're getting half a, a space buck per 1k population. So now our income would be plus 4 BC per turn. But our morale is at negative 2%, and we have an orange um, exclamation point, which tells us that our morale will be under 100% at this at this tax level. Now, what does morale affect? Well, it affects a number of things, but um, I'm not entirely sure what they are. I, I believe I know it affects like how much food your people make and how many minerals they get and stuff like that. I may also affect research rates, although I'm not 100% clear on that. So. I mean, it can have different effects, but eh, I don't really know exactly what they all are. Um, again, though, you know, the game is just not quite at that stage of development where you're going to get a lot of tooltip writing, you know. So hopefully these are things that will come later. But as the game stands right now, it's a little opaque about some of these things. But you can adjust this. Now, you don't want to... You don't want to have a red X. Uh, serious morale problems leading to strikes. That's not good. So um, I would say that a negative 2% morale, you know, 98% morale um, as opposed to 100% is probably not bad. Um, but you can't, like, you on this scale... It kind of jumps between these hash marks, which is a difference of, of one half of a space buck per turn, uh, per 1k population. Um, so, But there's nothing in between. Like, you can't stop in the middle of these two, uh, where you're like, oh man, this might be a sweet spot in between these two. Well, that's you got to pick one. So, um, I think n minus two morale is probably okay. You can change it at any time, so, you know. If you choose wrong, it's not that big a deal, but you do have to hit accept. If you hit something else and leave the screen, it resets to whatever it was when you went in. So just make sure you hit accept. Um, <clears throat> now, yeah, that's going to be yellow because we have uh, lower morale. That lowers our metal production. But I'm not too concerned about that because our metal's full anyway, and we're not really using it for anything right now. Um, so we'll have, we'll worry about that more a little bit later, but I want to build up some, some money while we have a chance, um, for when we start, you know, building spaceships, things like that. Let's increase our scout speed. And our morale's high again. Why? I don't know. I don't know. It shouldn't be. I... I well, uh, I guess because we just researched that technology really fast. Uh, okay, so resource identifier is good. It allows us to identify unknown research, uh, resource deposits. Um, 
Subterranean sensors is good. It doubles the chance that your scouts will find rare caches of minerals, money, uh, research data, and other oddities. I find it hard to choose between these two. I'm going to go with subterranean. I like the odds of finding more things. Um, so, you know, could we increase this another notch? Apparently we can, uh, but let's leave it at four. Uh, yeah, so... We'll let the scout keep going. Okay, it's finding minerals over here. That's a good sign. If there's some food tiles over this way somewhere, it might be a place to build another city. Of course, we've got a lot of continent that we haven't explored. It takes a long time for a scout to explore one of these planets. Um, so, uh, this is, you know, how the early phases of the game go. Um, we do need to pick another research path. As you can see, you spend most of your time trying to decide what to research. I'm going to research city construction just because hopefully we'll find a place, a good spot to build another city. Okay, now, we've got something going on here. This fossil fuel plant uh, has run out. It is out of juice. No more coal here. Now, we got another coal plant, but I see no reason to use that when we can build, um, you know, uh, solar power. So we have one, two, three, four, five city connections. We could have one more city connection, uh, no problem, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and delete this so that the city doesn't keep trying to do something with it. Uh, you just right click on it and then you hit this red X and it goes away, no problem. So now we'll go to build, we'll choose the solar power plant, and we will find a location to build it. How about right here in amongst all these fossil fuels? Uh, so, and we need to pick more research because, you know, we do. Uh, how about physics? Nuclear power plant can be fun, but you do have to find uranium, and you don't always get uranium from my experience. Resource sensors are good, though. Uh, and it will take 13 turns. And pretty soon I'm going to send the scout on a mission to show you how that works. Yeah, and so now this one is also gone, which is not a surprise. So, uh, after all, we did build the things on the same turn. I'm going to build another solar power plant. I... Yeah, because we're at minus eight. So, I think we need another one. And then this will put us at plus 48, which is more than we need, but, you know, what can you do? So, oh yeah, more research, because research uh, city blueprints housing natural gas is good uh, the one thing I will say there's almost too many technologies at the beginning because some of these technologies I think are not terribly important at this stage in the game they'll matter more later but they're just not terribly important right now and so there are times when I feel like I'm just kind of researching things just to research things even the, I, like I'm not there's I don't have a need for it you know um, I mean I recognize why the technologies exist in a in the abstract sense but it's uh, sometimes I'm like well I don't really care about this technology but I guess I gotta research it so I can get on up the tree so sure um, which you know I guess there's a lot of games that kinda of have that issue but it doesn't seem like a fun way to research things okay we found ore deposits um, why this one is red I don't know I don't know but at any rate uh, I think we're gonna cut the video here uh, it's been about 30 minutes or so and we come back we'll continue on with uh, predestination. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to make it to uh, space. Um, we may have to go out to uh, three or four videos. I want you to be able to see that um, because it is obviously a big part of the game, although um, this is a big part of the game too. They seem to be very focused on uh, planetary development. So you empire builders out there, uh, this may be one to keep an eye on. But at any rate, till the next video, I uh, hope you're doing well. We'll catch you in the next one.